Well, hey, good morning, Bay Chapel. That's pretty good. Usually I do it one more time, but that's pretty good on the first time. Good morning, Bay Chapel. So good to see you. Hey, let me just say welcome to those that are watching online. If you're with us, if you're out of town, if you're spring breaking, wherever you're at, I'm just praying that God will meet you right there. We are so glad that you're engaged with us online. Church family, would you just help welcome our online attenders this morning? Glad to have you. It is good to be in God's house. And I don't know about you, I came this morning expecting and needing Jesus to show up in my life. Does anybody need some Jesus in your life? All right, I just know who I need to pray for, all right? The rest of you, all right. Hey, if you are a first-time guest or first time in a long time, we are especially glad that you are in the room today. I pray that you feel right at home, that you feel loved, and that most importantly, that you experience just the goodness and grace of Jesus. Hey, it's a great day to be in church. Anybody enjoying the cool weather this morning? Oh, my goodness. I'm always thankful for this one uh, last blast right before, you know, it's summer for seven months. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a great day as we dive into God's word. And I, I want to just direct your attention to the, the Church Center app as we always do. It's a great way to stay connected and, and follow along in the message notes. And of course, the Church Center app is a great way to stay in touch with everything Bay Chapel, whether it's finding a group a place to serve, that uh, you can also give on the app. And I just want to take an opportunity. I don't spend a lot of time on the weekend talking about uh, the, the, our giving. And so I just want to take a, a couple minutes and just say thank you so much for your faithfulness and the way, and you give in every way, the way you serve, the, the way you're making a difference. Many of you are involved in outreach. Uh, uh, some of you today, you're a part of the food pantry team that blesses so many people on Saturdays. There's so many ways that we are the hands and feet of Jesus. And one of those ways is we honor God with our giving, with our tithe and our offering. And I wanna say thank you for being faithful with what God has blessed you with. Oftentimes people will ask me, what happens when I give? What happens when I give? And I wanna let you know what happens when you give. Number one, it is worship unto God. And I, 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 I've been convicted about this recently because I realized that everything in our life is digital. And so I just wanna challenge you is that when you, when you give digitally or when you open up that church center app, many of us, we don't even do it during Sundays. But make sure that when you do it, it's not just a financial transaction. I, I, I find that oftentimes when I open that app and I punch in the numbers, I'll just take an extra few seconds just to stop and say, thank you, God, for the way you have blessed my life. Thank you, God, that you've given me the opportunity to even be able to honor you and, and give. And I think it's, it's an opportunity to worship him and remind ourselves that without him, we are nothing. We are nothing. And he, he is the giver of everything in our life. And so we're just returning back to him what he has blessed us with. So one, it, it's our worship. And number two, it honors God. Like he is glorified by what is happening in and through the church and the way that we're making a difference. And I want you to know that we are, we are doing our best to be faithful with what God has blessed us with. You ask, what happens when I give? Well, let me tell you, with the resources that you give to Bay Chapel, the first 10% of our resources goes to missions. It goes outside of our church. One of the ways that we give is we give through ARC churches, and we give every month because we're helping plant more and more churches all around the country. We're involved with organizations like Convoy of Hope, which they're on the front lines with every disaster. We give to Children's Cup. We're involved in a significant way in the Dominican Republic, helping reach boys and girls, feeding them every single day. Uh, we're making a difference. Uh, it, we're involved with an organization called A Door of Hope, which helps uh, foster families uh, and, and, and families find foster kids and bring them into their home and make a difference for kids who are hurting and in difficult situations. We're involved with an organization in our community called No More, if you've never heard of No More, they are on the front lines of helping ladies get out of the trafficking industry and help rescue their lives. Yeah, it's good. 
And then there's small things that we do. Like two weeks ago, we got to go to Turtle Bartels and we got to pass out Chick-fil-A chicken sandwiches to every teacher. And those are my favorite because I love Chick-fil-A and I love teachers. So whether it's the big things or the little things, there's a lot that's happening outside of those four walls. And that's the first part of our giving. But I want you to know that your giving, it also helps pay for the overhead of our ministry. It helps pay for salaries and, and, and ministry leader expenses. And it also helps with all of our weekend expenses and, and renting this facility and doing the fun things on the weekends that we get to do. And I want you to know that without your faithfulness, we wouldn't be able to do it. So I just wanna thank you and I don't do it every weekend, but church, it's because of you and your investment and you believing in what God is doing through Bay Chapel that we're able to make a difference, amen. Thank you for your faithfulness. Hey, if you're ready for God's word, say, oh yeah. Oh yeah, we are in part five, part five of this series, The Jesus Way. And I've been loving this series. We're looking at the life of Jesus. And really over these last two or three weeks, we've been kind of leading toward the cross. And, and really we, we thought this series would be a great way for us to just turn our attention as we make our way toward Easter. And if we haven't said it a hundred times, we've said it 99, but here's a hundred, all right? Easter is three weeks away. And I, I want you to, to be as excited as we can about what God wants to do, not only in our lives this Easter season, but who in our neighborhood and who at our workplace and who at Publix that we're gonna bump into this week needs the gospel of Jesus. And, and let's do our part in, in getting people, getting people to the hope and goodness of the resurrected Christ. But we're really leading into this Easter season and we've been looking at the life of Christ. And last week we looked at this moment where Jesus had his best friends together and they were there getting ready for, for that last supper. And Jesus, he's, he's there fellowshipping with them and he takes out the towel. And it's so interesting how Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, chose to lower himself in humility, humble himself and become, become nothing, take the form of a servant and begin to wash their feet. Even to the men that were gonna deny him, even to the men that were gonna turn their back on him, betray him, Jesus chose to love the unlovable. And here's what we said last week, is that in our relationships, we have the choice to pick up unforgiveness, we have the choice to pick up bitterness, we have the choice to pick up the hurt and pain and carry it around, or we can pick up the towel and make a decision that you know what, we're gonna love even when it's difficult, we're gonna love when it's painful, and I believe that's the path that God wants us to take. Today I wanna spend a few minutes talking about the way of the vine, and we're gonna look at John 15, if you wanna go there, if you've got your Bibles or your app, we're gonna look at the words of Jesus, just these four or five verses and pull some truth from them today. Jesus says this in chapter 15, verse one. He says, I'm the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. And then he says this, everybody, he says, remain in me. Everybody say it together, remain in me. Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. The, the picture that I thought of as I studied this passage over and over this week is, is the picture of a, a mom or a dad or a parent at, at the corner of a busy intersection about to cross the street with her kids. There's no good parent on earth that would just say to their kids, good luck, good luck, all right, do the best you can, make your way across. Come on, you, you can do it. No, 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 any good parent that, that, that meets a situation where there's oncoming traffic, that there's danger, that there's gonna be stress and, and trials and the, the, the challenge of making a critical decision, an important moment, any good parent in that, in that place says, hold my hand, hold my hand, get near me, 
get close to me. Because in order for you to be safe as you navigate across this street, you're going to have to be as close, close as you can. You have to hold my hand. That's the only way we're getting across together. And I think today Jesus, he writes these words so long ago, but he says to every one of us today, this world is crazy. This world is challenging. You look at every aspect of life, government, politics, social, the issues in our life, they are so hard to navigate and man, there, there are, are curves and turns that we don't even realize are happening or know what's coming next. And Jesus saying this, if you're going to get through this, I need you to hold my hand. I need you to hold my hand. If you're trying to figure out how to get through this life using the world's ways, you will end up empty and burn out. But if you will remain in me, hey, son, I just need, we're going to get across the street. It feels a little overwhelming, and there's cars coming, but I promise you, if you will just stay with me, we're going to make it to the other side. We're going to make it to the other side. And here's the truth, because I'm guilty as well, is that sometimes I can leave Sundays, and I can go back into my old ways of trying to figure it out how to do it in my own strength. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 doesn't say, trust in yourself and lean on your own understanding. It says, trust in the Lord and lean not in your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path, right? Remain in me, remain in me. And here's the word of God. I'm gonna preach for about 25 more minutes, but here's the message, all right? Today's the day to one more make a decision that I'm gonna turn to Christ. I'm gonna remain in him. I'm gonna stay connected to the vine because there's strength, there's safety, there's security, and I can trust that God's plan for my life is perfect in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? <laughs> amen. Here, here's the truth. When I'm disconnected, my faith feels dry. My faith feels dry. And we can try so many things on our own to kind of like revitalize what's going on in our spirit. And I wonder today if, if there's somebody that's walked in the room and you feel dry, you feel discouraged, you feel burnt out. And if you're being really honest, you didn't even want to come this morning, but your wife or your husband or your kids, they got you here. And God right now is beginning to just to pull back one layer at a time, the crusty heart. He's saying, would you just, would you just surrender everything one more time? Would you just surrender everything and let me heal you? Let me sustain you. Let me just bring life to your dry and your aching body and spirit. Here's the truth, everybody. You can go to the gym six days a week. You can eat gluten-free. I don't care what you do. But if Jesus isn't the sinner, you will end up dry. Listen, let me, let me tell you today. I don't care how big the promotion is, you will still end up dry. I mean, I, I, I don't care how good your nap is this afternoon. If Jesus isn't the sinner, you will still end up dry. Because he says this, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Right? You, you can't look to anything in this world. Listen, you, you can take a, a branch that has fallen off a tree and you can go put it in your house and you can water it morning, noon, and night and do it for the next 30 days. Let me tell you, at the end of the 30 days, it will still be a dead branch. The only way that a branch stays alive is if it is connected to the tree. And the truth is, some of us, we are trying to pour water on a dead branch and we're wondering why we don't feel like we're living because we're not connected to Jesus. He's gotta be the source. He's got to be everything. And that's why we're disconnected. Our faith feels dry. And then the second thing I think oftentimes is, is when we're disconnected, we're easily distracted. When we're disconnected, we're easily distracted. We start looking to other things. We start looking to other things to try to fill the void. And we're distracted. We get, we get caught up in things that really aren't spiritual or eternal and maybe just provide a feeling for a moment, but they don't satisfy. I don't know about you, but it is so easy just to hop on your phone and wonder where did the time go? 
You, you get pulled in by whether it's social media or the news or something going on. It's so easy to get distracted by the things of life that don't really matter. And distractions, they steal our time. They reduce our focus. They cause us to put off what's really important. I find this even in my life that it's so easy. Oftentimes what I'll do is I'll head to the gym in the morning and I like to get there just a few minutes early and and spend some time in the Word. But I'll tell you, it is a daily challenge for me to make sure that I don't pick up my phone first. Oh man, I, I, I am guilty that I love the good dopamine hits in the morning. I want to find out what's going on. I just want, I don't even like to check my email, but I'm just checking. Is there anything that came in? And I found myself even this week, there was one morning I went to pick up my Bible and I picked up my phone instead and I went to go look at scores. I loved in the morning just to see what happened last night, watch a video or two and catch up on a couple games. And immediately the Holy Spirit just convicted me. And I looked up and I, I looked into the morning sky and I saw some stars and began to see the sunlight come out. As God reminded me like, hey, I have an appointment with you. You have an opportunity to connect with the creator of the universe and you're caring about what game happened. Here's the truth, everybody. We get so distracted. I even put this note on my phone as a reminder to me. It says, thrown before phone. Thrown before a phone. So that every morning I can remind myself, you can, you can find a, a, a little soothing, a little gratification, a little pick-me-up in what's here. Or you can encounter the living God. And you can experience everything that he wants to give you. Fullness and strength and joy and peace. And make sure that everything in your life today starts with him. Starts with him. Let's not just get distracted by the empty things of this life. John Orberg, he says this, for many of us, the great danger is not that we will renounce our faith. It is that we'll become so distracted and rushed and preoccupied that we will settle for a mediocre version of it. You know, the truth is the way the enemy works is that distractions oftentimes are so small that they don't feel that bad. But the enemy doesn't want to distract you. He wants to destroy you. And so he'll make distractions actually feel kind of good so that he can just slowly, sneakily get us off the path, chasing after things that really aren't God's plan for our life. This week, Jen showed me a video of a pastor. He had, about a year ago, his life was completely derailed and This week, he posted a video as pastor of one of the largest churches in America. It's about a nine-minute video where he shared his heart. It was the first time he had talked since last year. His church was just booming campuses all over Texas and uh, growing like crazy. They had made the list of the top growing churches in America, and he got distracted. Here's the truth. I'm bringing his story up, but... It could be pastors, it could be business leaders, it can be anybody. And it was a sobering, my heart just, my, my heart grieved for this man and his family. As he just admitted, hey, I messed up. He got in a relationship, he shouldn't, he had an affair. And not only did he lose his marriage, he lost his ministry, he lost everything. He lost everything. There's a couple of reminders to me. Number one, let's make sure we never put our trust in man, but we always put our trust in God. Yeah. And number two, none of us are invincible. None of us are invincible. I'm, I, I, I'm never going to dog another pastor from this pulpit because I believe, and I still believe, he's a man of God that messed up. He's a man of God that messed up. I love him. I, I care for him. I don't know him, but I care for him, and my heart breaks for him. And I'm, I, I, but let me also say this. Let me just pastor you for, for a minute. This is totally unrelated to the message. If you tie your faith to a man, then you have reduced God to a human, all right? And so, please, please, I know that we've all been through trauma and struggles and, and, and men have failed us and pastors have failed us and I may have failed you. But make sure that you never reduce the, the church and God and what he's doing on the earth to fallen man because we all will sometime blow it. Amen, amen. 
All right, that was extra credit for today, and, and so let's get back. Here, here's what I'm saying is that we all get distracted, and I realize that what happened to him could happen to me, and it could happen to you. And I want to humbly submit to you, let, let the Holy Spirit pierce the areas of our heart where there's pride that's covering our sin. All right? Let, let's, let's, let's humbly repent and say, God, you know what? I want to get back on the path that you have for me. Because when I'm disconnected, I'm distracted, I feel dry, and then I search for things that satisfy. I think about Jesus when he encounters, you remember he goes through Samaria in John chapter 5. He goes out of the way to encounter this woman whose life is a mess. She doesn't realize it, but he knows all about her. And she's searching for water at the well. And he says, you know what, I've got something better for you. I've got, I, when you drink of the water that I've got, you'll never be thirsty again. And he can tell her kind of skeptical spirit and that she's not in tune with what he's saying. He says, hey, where's your, where's your husband? I don't, I don't have a husband. Well, I know you don't. As a matter of fact, you've, you, you've, you've had five husbands and the man that you're with now isn't even your husband. You know what Jesus, Jesus wasn't, Jesus wasn't calling her out. He was letting her know that I love you even in the state you're in. But if you keep searching down the wrong road, it will continually lead you to emptiness. But if you will come to me and find your life in me, I have living water that will never run dry. And my, my encouragement today, let's not, let's not run after empty wells. Let's not run after empty wells, things that are keeping us dry. David says this in Psalm 63, oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My, my soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. A.W. Tozer, he said this, as God is, is exalted to the right place in our lives, a thousand problems are solved all at once. It's like life begins to make sense again. That I can view my struggles and my situations through the fact that I've got a God who loves me, who knows me. He sees right where I'm at and he's gonna see me through my situation, amen. It's the way of the vine. It's the way of the vine. Jesus says, remain in me. There's just three thoughts I have for us as we close the message. And I said we close the message. And in about 10 minutes, we're going to close the message. All right. Number one, we got to stay connected. We got to stay connected. The word, the thought there is abiding. Is abiding. It's just being with Jesus. So connected to him that we know his voice. That we know his heart that we're walking in his will, we're staying connected. He says this in verse four, remain in me, remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Here's the truth about remaining, is that not only am I connected to God, but when I'm connected to the vine, I'm also connected to you. Is that the branches are all interconnected because they're all connected to the vine. Here's the truth. I can't have a healthy view of God and a dysfunctional view of my relationships with others. I, 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 I can't be in a whole place with God and be in this dysfunctional place with my spouse or with my kids. I, I, God wants it all to be whole. And so many of us, we, we're choosing to live a life where everything's good with God, but we haven't figured out how to make it right with others. And God wants it to be healthy in both areas of our life. You're getting real quiet this morning. We're, we're all connected. And God wants to remind us that when we're connected, powerful things can happen. Miracles can happen. He can move mountains. He even says this. Jesus says this in Matthew 18. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. I love that word agree. If you look it up in the Greek, it's this word symphoneo. Symphoneo. It's where we get the word symphony. You know the picture that Jesus gives when he, when he commands us to, to, to be unified? It's the picture of a bunch of musicians coming together that know their part 
And when they play their part in time together, it makes a beautiful sound. There's something amazing that comes out of it. Everybody in the room, you are special to God. You are important to God, but you are a part of the body of Christ. Don't let the enemy lie to you or make you feel less than or feel like you're broken or wounded. You are here on purpose for, for a purpose to make a difference for his kingdom. All right. I, I don't care if you play the trombone, the handbells, whatever you play, you're part of the symphony. All right. And let's do something great for the kingdom of God. Let's be connected. Let's stay in the vine and be a part of his body. And then number two, let's embrace pain. Let's embrace pain. That word is pruning, pruning. He says in John 15, I'm the true vine and my father is the gardener. And he cuts off every branch of mine that does, doesn't produce fruit. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that, that they will produce even more. This is the part we don't like. I wanna avoid the pain. I want everything to be great. I want the success. I want it all, God. I just want to skip the pain part. And he says this, if you want fruit, if you want the best of what I have for you, there's got to be, there's got to be a pain, painful season. There's going to be some cutting. There's going to be some pulling back, and it's all part of the process that I have for making you who I've created you to be. I think the truth oftentimes, though, is that when we go through painful seasons, our flesh, our heart, it wants to run. It wants to run. You're walking through some difficulties in your marriage, the enemy says run. You're walking through some issues at work, the enemy says run. It doesn't matter what season of pain or hurt or heartache, our flesh, it often, it, it's choose, it, it, it's so bad it wants to escape the pain. A few weeks ago, we were having a, one of our baseball games and the boys, is one of the toughest games of the season. I think every kid was striking out. We couldn't field a ball. It was just ugly. It, it, it was bad. At one point, I, I went to the bench and one of our boys was sitting there and I went to just try to encourage our sons. And <laughs> my boy looked up to me, he said, Dad, I think I just want to go home. And there, the coach part of me just got really frustrated. And I'm like, no, you're not going home. Get out on the field. Like, ah. <laughs> and then there's the compassionate part of me. That comes later. <laughs> My first response is rarely compassion. I got to work through all the frustration and flesh part of me. All right, I'm just being too real with you this morning. It's like, I, I know. I know, but I kind of feel like going home too. <laughs> this, this isn't a, it's not a whole lot of fun losing, is it? It's not a whole lot of fun striking out. I don't know about you. There have been some days where the trials and troubles have been so great. I just kind of thought, Jesus, I don't know what your schedule is. But if you want to push up that coming back thing to today, I'd be all right with it. I'm, I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to go home. Ready to go home. I, I'd rather not live the rest of today. I, I, I think so often we look for ways to escape pain, to avoid the pain. And God wants to say to us, you know what? I might have you there on purpose for a purpose so that you can become all that I want you to be. Because what you're walking through right now is, is something that somebody else is going to walk through and they're going to need you in a later season of their life. They're gonna need to know how to get through the struggles. They're gonna need to know how to get through that, that painful divorce or that heartbreak or that lost family member or whatever the case may be. And at times where you feel like giving up, you gotta lean in and go, you know what, God, you're pruning me. This is painful. I don't know why it's happening. I want to just get there, but I don't want to go through. And God said, you know what? You need to stop focusing on what life is going to be like in five years and ten years. You just need to remain. You just need to remain. Stay in the season that you're in. Let God do his good work in you because when you go through it, you're going to be well tested. You're going to come through on the other side knowing that God has been faithful in the most difficult season of your life. Can somebody say amen? Amen. 
In Romans 5 says this, we can rejoice when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance. It's a good thing that we're being tested. It's a good thing that we're walking through trials. We all love tested things. The chairs that, you, that you're sitting in right now, they were tested. The car that you're, you're driving in, thank God it was tested. That bridge as you make your way over to the beach, it's been tested. Every, everything in life, the doctor that you go see, they had to pass some tests. You, you wouldn't want to go see a doctor that hadn't been through some things, that had walked through some trials, that experienced some tests. No, it's made them better. The truth is that the, the test isn't to destroy you, that the test has helped to define you, make you who God has called you to be. Can somebody say amen? amen. Remain, remain. Experience the cutting, the pruning, and know that God is working his perfect will in your life. And then the third thing, and we'll close with this, is be fruitful. Be fruitful. Stay connected. I just want to challenge you today. If you've been in and out in your walk with God, maybe you've been in and out in your relationships because you're walking through some struggles and you kind of put up a wall. You say, you know what, I'm just going to stay at an arm's distance. Why don't you just pull back the layers today and say, God, I'm giving you everything. I'm jumping back on the vine. I'm going to stay connected. Embrace pain. Let him prune us. And then number three, be fruitful and let him produce in us. Let him produce in us. John 15, 5 says, those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. You say, how do I know if I'm connected to the vine? Your life will show it. Your life will show it. You know an apple tree when you look at it because it's got apples. We drove past, we're heading to Jen's grandparents this week and we went past a farm. I knew there were strawberry plants because I could see those big, beautiful, I was tempted just to pull off the side and grab a few while we were driving because I could see the strawberries. The truth is when we're connected to the vine, it produces in us the qualities of God in our life. If you're wrecked with anxiety, I want to challenge you, get to the vine. If you're overwhelmed by the cares of this life, if you're dealing with temptation, if there's addiction that's wreaking havoc in your life, everybody, get to the vine. Remain. Because God, that's where, that's where he can pour his Holy Spirit into your life. Galatians 5, it says this. It says, when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, he will produce this kind of fruit in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, patience, patience. I'll just stay there for a minute. Let's preach to myself. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the fruit of the Spirit. My prayer today, my prayer today. Do you just feel God's presence in the room this morning? I do, I do. And I believe he's speaking to it. My prayer today is that God one more time would remind us and encourage us to get back to the vine, to get back to the vine. If you've been a dead branch that's fallen from the tree, living on your own, doing life your own way, feeling like, you know what, I've got this. I'm successful. I've got the accolades of man. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. I tell you, God has a way of getting our attention reminding us we are nothing without him. Let's stay connected to the vine, amen. I mean, why don't you bow your heads as we pray. Father, we love you and we thank you for your word. Thank you for the challenge today, God. To remain, to remain. God, as you are with the Father, help us to be that connected, that close to you. Have you walked in the room today and you've been distracted? 
You've been overwhelmed by the things of this life. You're carrying struggles and burdens. Maybe you've been disconnected. Today's your day to say, Jesus, I just, I just give it all to you, Lord. I just give it all to you. And why don't you just make an altar right there where you're at right now and just surrender everything. If you want to open your hands, open your heart, and just, just lay it all out at the feet of Jesus and say, God, I give it to you right now. I give it to you. I give you my spouse. I give you my kids, my family, my job, my dreams, my ambitions. Jesus, I need you. Come on, just, as we sang it this morning, just declare right now, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need you. Holy Spirit, would you come in and fill us and change us? If you're here right now, you just need to repent and say, God, you know what, I'm giving you my heart. I need you to come in my life. Why don't you just raise your hand to heaven right now and say, that's me. Jesus, save me. Forgive me. God bless you. God bless you. You put it down after you've raised it. Thank you, God. Say a simple prayer like this. Jesus, come in my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Be the Lord of my life. This day forward, God, I want to serve you, follow you all my days. I ask you to make me brand new today, God. Make me brand new. Save me, heal me, forgive me, deliver me. Set me free to love you and serve you all my life. God, we just thank you for your word. And I pray, even if it's just one nugget, one nugget, that something would sink deep into our spirit and we would leave today changed, challenged to be more like you. Lord, we love you. We give you our worship. We give you our hearts today. We ask God, your hand, your blessing on this word. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. 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 Come on, church family. Why don't you put your hands together?